Hello, welcome to Mox the Marine. In this video, I am going to discuss the uh, use of LS engines in marine applications. Um, <clears throat> just about, I'd say 99% of the uh, boat engines I rebuild are old technology from the uh, late 80s and throughout the 90s and maybe tad into the 2000s. And it's known as, uh, what's known as a uh, small block Chevy. And also the 4.3, which is a sawed off version of the small block Chevy. Um, and if you throw 3.0s thrown in there. But um, what you see before you is a LS motor. It's a six liter. It's in my personal truck. And um, it's a, what's called a Gen 3. It's a Gen 3, so I think the blocks from about 2000, uh, six liter. But um, I've reconfigured it as a Gen 4 engine and put it in a Gen 4 vehicle. And it's, uh, this engine or this uh, vehicle has a Gen 4 computer and it's running this Gen 3 engine. So <clears throat> the bottom line is there's not a whole lot of difference between Gen 3 and Gen 4. You just have to know a few of the differences. But um, the purpose of this video is not to assess that. That's for another video topic. What I want to discuss is uh, tell you the difference between fuel injection and carburation and why it shouldn't scare you off to go fuel injection. So what you see is um, this is the throttle body. That's what's called a MAP sensor, M-A-P, MAP sensor. And then down here on the left side underneath or behind the starter is what's, there's a crankshaft position sensor. And then up here in the front of the motor, I don't know if you can see it down in there, um, right down through there, there's a camshaft position sensor. <clears throat> this engine happens to be built as an LS2, which is a six liter aluminum block LS2 found in Corvettes. So I'm using all the LS2 electronics, but our electronic sensors, but it's being run by the stock uh, truck computer. Um, so anyway, <clears throat> like I say, it's an LS motor and it's in a truck, or it's in a truck, but I'm trying to convert, my goal is to convert a lot of the uh, old technology small block Chevys that come through my shop into LS engines. And there's several reasons why. One, they're better designed. Um, to me, they're, they're much stronger. They run at higher RPM. These, are, these, these engines have a, a 6,500 red line. You don't have to run them that high, but they can, they're capable of running up to 6,500 RPM stock factory, which is pretty, pretty high. Um, <clears throat> so let me explain why you shouldn't be afraid of fuel injection. So like I was saying, you've got the map sensor, the crankshaft position sensor, the cam, the cam sensor down in the front. And then you've got a coolant sensor, which is all over here on the side, right down there. Right there, that's your coolant sensor. Those are the only sensors needed to run fuel injection, period. Um, some people might argue, me that, argue with me about that, but those are, the only, those are the three primary sensors you need to run fuel injection on any vehicle, whether it be this one or, or any other vehicle. Um, and let me explain why. So, um, I'm trying to get too deep into technology, but uh, down here is what's called a MAF sensor. I've got my computer program to ignore that one. That's a backup sensor. Or it's actually not a backup. GM programs the MAF sensor and the MAP sensor to work together on most vehicles and give an average rating of both. I think it's called, uh, I'm trying to remember what it's called. Um, there's a term for it, but I can't remember what it is. Um, but what I do is I turn off the MAF sensor and I just run strictly MAP sensor. And I do that because it seems to me to run better. It's more, it's more, uh, it's crisper. It has better throttle response. Um, <clears throat> so like I was saying, if you turn the MAF off, all you need is the MAP sensor, the crankshaft position sensor, and the camshaft sensor, and the coolant sensor. And the computer's got all the information, information it needs to run an engine just fine. It runs great. And it's called speed density. <clears throat> and it, what it does, it uses the, the RPMs of the engine, it has to know the size of the engine, like this is a six liter, it has to know the size of each cylinder, it has to know the map pressure in the manifold, which that sensor there, it has to know the RPM, which is provided by the crankshaft sensor. And the cam, the cam sensor doesn't really tell it, it helps to run it in what's called sequential mode. I've got another video, which I'll link in this, the description of this video, uh, the difference between, or how sequential works, but basically sequential means that you got eight injectors and they each fire one at a time. Instead of firing all at the same time, they fire one at a time. And the cam position sensor is what allows that to happen. Without the cam position sensor, you can't fire them individually one at a time. It's called sequential, as opposed to batch. So anyway, um, as I was saying, um, you only need the three primary sensors, um, the crankshaft, map, and coolant to run an engine, any engine, doesn't matter. It's all in the calibration. Um, any other sensor is just extraneous and uh, just an additional point, bit of information to help the computer make it run, uh, I guess, to recover from uh, situations where, like, for example, if you got low fuel pressure because your fuel pump's going bad, your oxygen sensors tell the computer that, hey, you're, you're running lean and you need to richen it up, and it can correct up to about 25%. 
but for most of, most of the time, the oxygen sensors aren't doing anything. They're just kind of like a watchdog checking things out, but they're not actually, they're not actively changing anything in the fuel. Uh, a lot of people argue me about that. Bring it on. I, I'm going to stick to it. Um, so, matter of fact, a lot of people are running what's called open loop mode. They turn off the oxygen sensors and they run their vehicle it, uh, all the time in that mode, in open loop mode. And uh, a lot of people do it all the time. And it's perfectly fine. Uh, a lot of race engines do that. They don't use oxygen sensors. But um, anyway, uh, to put this in a boat, like I was saying, all I really need is the map sensor, the crankshaft sensor, crankshaft position sensor, the camshaft position sensor, and the coolant sensor. Now, an additional sensor is this throttle position sensor right here. Um, this is actually a, a it's called a drive-by wire. It's an electronic motor that's open at the closing the throttle, and it's all done through here. But so your throttle position sensor is in here also. Um, I'd rather not have a drive-by wire on a boat. I think a cable, uh, cable-driven throttle would be better because then it can interface with your existing uh, boat con speed controls and your shift controls and all that, and it'd, it'd work better. But you probably could do a, a drive-by wire if you wanted to. But um, so anyway, Gen, Gen 3 up to about 2005, and then Gen 4, 2007 or up. So everything I would put in would be a Gen 3, you know, a Gen 3 electronics. And again, uh, it's not as complicated as you might want to think. Uh, it only takes three primary sensors and everything will run fine. And um, so, like I say, my goal is to um, eventually bring people into the, uh, 20, uh, what is it, 21st century. And um, by the way, there is a premium to do this. You need a new exhaust system, which is about $1,000. You need a new flywheel, LS flywheel, and it's about $400. And then you'll need a, uh, <clears throat> what's called a, uh, heat exchanger and you have to run you run your water, raw water you put a raw water pump on the front of this engine and that pumps through a heat exchanger and then this engine circulates through the other side of the heat exchanger and the water in this engine never touches the salt water or any other uh, raw water and that's one of the big benefits of going LS uh, matter of fact that's to me the main benefit is that you have what's now a closed cooling system the LS uh, engine having salt the LS engine being uh, aluminum having aluminum heads and sometimes aluminum block you don't want to run salt water through that and you don't have to with a closed cooling system the salt water will never see your engine so therefore you run antifreeze which means you don't have to drain for the winter time you don't have to drain your block you don't have to drain anything associated with the engine you still have to drain the heat exchanger the the, the raw water side of it and i'm imagining those uh, those drains are, are pretty minimal uh maybe one or two at the most so it's a much uh, it's better for your engine you have much less risk of freezing it in the winter time it's less maintenance. You don't have to, you got antifreeze and it'll stay in there for what five years. You don't have to change it. And uh, really, it's a simpler system. You know, like I said, there is a premium. It's about uh, probably about two thousand dollars per engine, um, plus or minus, to uh, upgrade to an LS motor. But to me, the benefits are worth it. You get a more powerful engine, more reliable engine, and um, and whilst they're reliable, less prone to freeze, less maintenance, and so forth. Um, I personally have been tuning fuel injection for the last 20 years. I cannot stand carburetors. They give me fits. Um, I'm dealing with one today. Um, got a carburetor boat. I just can't get working right, and it's uh, really, really a mess. Let me add a little bit more information about um, LS motors and um, boat applications. So in the last six months, I have, uh, amongst all the engines I've built, I've built two engines, two 5 point, well, one was a 5.0 and one was a 5.7. And they're both fuel injected. One was a multi-port fuel injection, similar to this. It had separate injectors for each cylinder. And the other was throttle body injection. And it had a throttle body, uh, it had a throttle body system sitting on top of the engine with two injectors. Um, I can do either one. And both of those were Merc Cruiser, uh, factory Merc Cruiser fuel injection. And um, when I finished building the engines, um, and t I basically, you know, got them running on water muffs and, and did basic timing and stuff like that. But um, I didn't bother to take them to the river and test drive them. And the reason was, um, there's nothing I can do to adjust the fuel injection on the water. There's no, I can take it out and drive it, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't matter. I can't, I can't. There's nothing I can change on the water to make that engine run better. Um, so the reason, really the only reason I would take a boat out on the river or out on the ocean or not ocean, but I don't, I live in, I'm a, I'm a, what do you call it? Um, landbound. Um, but um, the only reason I would take a boat out, a fuel injection boat out on, on the water to test it is to make sure it doesn't sink. And that's to make sure the exhaust bands and the clamps and everything are tight and it doesn't take on water through the exhaust system. 
But other than that, there's no reason for me to take a fuel injector boat on the water because, again, there's nothing I can adjust on the water. I'm, not, I'm talking about a factory application. I'm not talking about if the engine is specially tuned or if it's a high performance engine and it needs custom tuning, that's different. But if the engine's basically stopped, it's got the same fuel injection that came on that stock engine, there's really nothing I can change or nothing I need to tune uh, on the water. So there's no point in taking it out there. Um, so that's, uh, that's uh, uh, why I really think fuel injection is better. Uh, if it's carbureted engines, I have to go out on the river and test them. I have to tweak the idle speeds. I have to tweak the idle mixture on the carburetors. Um, I have to check to make sure it's not bogging down. It's getting enough accelerator pump shot. Um, usually I have to check. I'll pull out a spark plug and see if it's rich or lean and all that. A whole lot of extra work to do when it's carbureted versus fuel injection. Because I don't know, the, car the carburetor is a mechanical system and um, the mechanical systems in the carburetor can break down and you don't know it. With fuel injection, um, you'll get a sign that something's wrong when the engine doesn't idle right or if it doesn't idle right, it's not going to run anywhere else right either. So you, uh, the fuel injection kind of self-diagnoses by the way it performs. But if it's idling fine, then everything else should work too. Because idling, in, uh, the consistent is using the same sensors it does with idling is when it's running full throttle and the calibration should take care of everything else. So um, again, um, I really believe that uh, fuel injection is, is a better way to go in a boat. Uh, oh, and by the way, I'm going to do a series of uh, videos on uh, how to tune your own fuel injection in a boat. And uh, hopefully those videos will hit my channel in the next three to four months. And uh, it'll cover LS motors specifically. And uh, I'll try to keep it as simple as possible. And uh, I basically, I approach it from uh, a lot of tuners on the internet. I believe they approach it the wrong way. And by that, I mean they tune as if they are, they're kind of young guys. So they tune based on their, the way they were taught. But the proper way to do it, uh, to me, to learn tuning is to learn it from as if you were a carburetor guy and transitioning over to fuel injection. Because the terminology that carburetors use or carburetor tuners use is really, um, to me, more fundamental. It's the more fundamental sciences. Um, people, a lot of people don't understand what lambda is, but a lot of people understand what air fuel ratio is. It's just, it's just what they're for, uh, just what they're familiar with. Um, um, so anyway, um, I'll do a lot of some a series of videos on how to tune fuel injection so that uh, it won't scare you so bad. But um, me personally, um, carburetors, um, carburetors cost me a lot of money because I end up having to spend time trying to fix the engine and uh, sort out carburetor problems. When it's fuel injected and I can get it running, I'm done, and that motor's ready to go back to the uh, ready to go back to the owner faster. So again, I just want to add this extra information, and I'll take you back to the uh, video now. So um, hope you enjoy the video. Um, again, the purpose of this video is to uh, try to persuade people that LS motors are not uh, are, are great motors to upgrade into a marine application, and uh, for the right price, it, it's doable. So. Thanks for watching, and uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and uh, bring on the boats, and let's put some LS motors in it. Thanks for watching.